Okay, so I will be analysing the poem After by Philip Bork Marston. So first a bit about the poet. So when he was three years old, he was exposed to scarlet fever. He was given a very risky treatment, which he survived luckily, but it caused him to be partially blind. And over the years, his vision gradually deteriorated until he lost it completely. And this is quite an important element in the poem, which we'll mention later on. Um, he met and fell in love with a woman named Mary Nesbitt, and they were quickly engaged to be married. So at this point, his life looked like it was heading towards a bright and happy future. However, fate had other plans in store for him, and he lost basically everyone that he cared for. His wife, his sisters, his friends, his mentor, his dad, they all died. So no wonder this poem is so sad. And also we have to remember that during this time, during he, uh, during the time that he was suffering these losses, he was his sight was also gradually deteriorating. So this poem is intensely personal and there is no doubt that Marston is using his personal voice in the speaker and he is reflecting on his own personal losses. Um, so eventually he died at only the age of 37 in 1887. Okay, so the deeper meaning. Without love, one is lost, and without dreams and hopes for the future, one will suffer for eternity. Time is cruel, it will end all happy moments before they have even begun. So in the, in the poem, the overall message is conveyed, um, which is that the true tragedy of life is not that time passes quickly, but that it passes inconsistently, and this is something that we'll look at later on. So... The first stanza, a little time for laughter, a little time to sing, a little time to kiss and cling and no more kissing after. The anaphora hammers home Marston's life lesson, which is that time is so mercilessly short. The repeated sounds of the words, a little time, as well as the iambic rhythm which is created, mirrors the ticking of a remorseless clock and emphasises time's cruelty. The first and fourth lines end on an unstressed beat. This is known as falling rhythm or catalexis, and this creates an unfinished feel to the line, as though the speaker were lingering on the, on the memories, unwilling to move on and accept the fact that they have already been stolen from him by time. The rhythm created here combines well with the verb cling as it shows how the speaker is holding on tight and how he does not want to let go. The emotional connotations of some of the words such as laughter, sing, cling, kissing, it recreates the painful nostalgia of a happy past, a past that has been negated by the use of the phrase no more. So this just serves to emphasize um, the loss in the speaker's life. A little while for scheming, love's unperfected schemes. A little time for golden dreams, then no more any dreaming. The repetition used here, scheming, schemes, dreams, dreaming, creates a pattern of giving and taking. It recreates the cutting short of Marston's experiences. His plans for the future have all been left unperfected, as it says in the second line, loves unperfected schemes. The speaker has felt the hope of happiness, but has had no time to see his dreams fulfilled. So again, um, this reiterates the idea of um, cutting short, of giving and taking. A little time t'was given to me to have thy love. Now, like a ghost, alone I move about a ruined heaven. So we have the simile, like a ghost, which shows that a life lived alone without any love is a kind of living death. So after, now, suggests after life. This idea is compounded in the phrase ruined heaven. Um, 
we are led to question whether it is better to have never loved at all than to have love, but to feel the pain after it is lost. Marston suggests here that having tasted heaven, that love, having dreamt of happiness, it's made all the more painful now that it has been ruined and now that he has lost all hope for a happy future. A little time for speaking, things sweet to say and hear, a time to seek and find thee near, then no more any seeking. So we have the assonance, which is used to strengthen the auditory effects in the poem, the drawn out E sound in speaking, sweet, hear, seek, near, seeking. Um, it sharpens the note of self-reproach in Marston's tone of voice as he reflects on his personal losses. Visual imagery in the poem is quite scarce, and this is um, most likely due to the fact that Marston was losing his sight. So it is the auditory and tactile things that he uh, seems to miss the most. For example, this is seen in verbs such as laughter, kissing and clinging in the first stanza. A little time for saying, words the heart breaks to say. A short, sharp time to pray, then no more need for praying. We have personification of the speaker's heart, which intensifies the pain that the speaker is feeling. We also have negation once again which is used to emphasise the speaker's hopelessness. He has reached utter desolation. There is no escaping. He has lost all hope for the future and he has succumbed to the darkness. He has accepted the fact that time is cruel and there is nothing he can do to overpower it. But long, long years to weep in and comprehend the whole, great grief that desolates the soul and eternity to sleep in. Um, the connective but marks a shift. A little time has now turned into long, long years, and this presents us with the true tragedy of the human condition, which is not that time passes quickly, but that it passes um, inconsistently, with happy times coming to an end before they have even begun, and sad times lasting forever. The hyperbole suggests a loss of emotional control and an outpour of emotion. And this is seen in long, long years, desolates the soul, eternity. The final line suggests that death will finally provide a relief from the speaker's suffering. He has rejected a heaven that is ruined in favour of oblivion and eternal darkness. Something which is emphasised in the full stop at the end, which adds to the finality of this idea. Okay, so now I've got some topic areas um, that I would use when writing an essay on this poem. So for the first topic area, I would focus on the first two stanzas, which display a glimpse of the speaker's joyful times, which have now come to an end. And for the second topic area, I'd focus on the next two stanzas, which continue on with uh, the previous idea that joyful times are bound to come to an end, and also how we get the message that without love, one is lost, and a life, with, a life without love is a living death. And this is seen in um, the simile, like a ghost and ruined heaven. And then for the final topic area, I'd focused on the final two stanzas, which intensify the speaker's sadness and grief and display the true tragedy, which is not that time passes quickly, it is that it passes inconsistently, where happy times are over quickly and the ones filled with suffering are eternal. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching.